All right, if you haven't already, please make sure that your first and last name is on your packet. Today is December the 5th. The assignments that are due this week, we have our warm-up, our homework. Our quiz this week is going to be on scatter plots, lines of best fit, residuals, everything dealing with scatter plots. That's our quiz on Friday, everything dealing with scatter plots. Correlation, positive correlation, negative correlation, all of those things. Our quarter test. Our quarter test is December the 14th. We will meet in the multi-purpose room. That's not this week, that's next week. So you'll know in advance. You have to have a charged laptop. So please make sure that you you charge your laptop. I'm gonna send out a message the night before, but you need to make sure that you charge your laptop every night anyway. Okay, but you must have a school laptop. If you don't have the school laptop, one will be issued to you. But you need to make sure that um, that you bring your school laptop to school and it should be charged. The agenda is on the sideboard. Okay, we're gonna write in our planner. And then we're going to do, I'm going to go over the warm up because there were questions about mm. the warm up. And our planner, we're going to write our goals down. I'm going to go over <coughs> line of best fit. Before I do line of best fit, I'm going to go over um, how to measure the correlation, the strength of a correlation first. And you do that in the calculator. So I'm going to do those things in the calculator. Then I'm going to go over line of best fit and making predictions. And then you're going to practice. All of your work today is going to be in the interactive notebook, page 19 and page 20. Make sure that you take out your planner. I'm going to pause to give you a chance to write, but please make sure that you take out your planner. We have tutoring this week, virtual tutoring. This week will be on Wednesday at 430. In-person tutoring will be after school. Your ride must be here by 345 on Tuesday. All right, planner. We're in December now for our goals. It's December the 5th, so we're putting 12, 5. My goal for this week is to try to finish everything on scatter plots. I would like to do midpoint, endpoint and perpendicular parallel lines. We've already talked about all of the above, but I need to make sure you understand those, all of which will be on your quarter test, okay? All of which will be on your quarter test. Unit one, everything we've covered so far could be on your quarter test. If it's not on your quarter test, of course, it's gonna be at the on the end of year testing. Um, please make sure that you attend some of these tutoring sessions that we have because you do have a quarter test, okay? Yes, babe. Do you have any more agendas for I have to make some more copies. Okay. All right, let's go to a new page in our planner. This is week five. This is from the dates for this week is December the 5th through December the 9th. This is quarter two, week five. Math one homework. Please make sure it's a very short video because it's, it's a concept that we've already done before. Watch your homework help video if you need to. You probably don't need to. Um, and then complete your homework. Work on your project.
I'm going to make a project help video tomorrow for you to watch. I'm gonna cover the next few steps in the project. Please make sure you know tutoring, after school tutoring is on Tuesday. You must have your ride here's from 2.20 to 3.45. Uh, you must have your ride here at that time. And then virtual tutoring is Wednesday. And that's at 4.30. Any questions? Anyone still riding? Okay, let's look at the warm up. All right, so here we're talking about repeated decimals. When you have a repeated decimal, the denominator is going to be nine. Very good, nine. The numerator is going to be the number or numbers that are repeating. The number that's repeating is 4 and reduce it. Is there a number that will go into both 4 and 9 without a remainder? No. So this is our reduced fraction. Okay. Number 2, we have two numbers repeating and it's 27. So the next number would go 27, 27, 27 and it continue without end. 2 and 7 are two different numbers that are repeating. So our denominator is 99. Our numerator are the two numbers that are repeating, 27. Is there a number that will go into both two and each, sorry, 27 and 99? And what number is that? 3, okay? So if there's even a bigger number. What's the bigger number? 9. How many times will not, uh, 27 divided by 9 is what? 3. 99 divided by 9 is what? 11. So our reduced fraction is, ele is 3 over 11. All right, let's pick what two integers are um, the square root of, of 30. If I'm doing this pencil and paper without a calculator, I need to think. One number times itself will give me... A number that's close to uh, 30 and that's 5 right what's 5 times 5 25. 25 so I know the square root of 25 is equal to 5 what's 6 times 6 36. 36 I know the square root of 36 is equal to 6 do you see how the square root of 30 is in between these two perfect squares so my answer uh, is going to be the square root of 30 is going to be between 5 and 6 those are the two integers that it's in between, or whole numbers. We're going to place the square root of 2 on the number line. Let's think. Um, where does 2 fall? Where does it fall on the number line? What two whole numbers is it in between? We know it's between 1 and 2, right? Is it closer to 1 or closer to 2? Is closer to one. Anybody type that in? The square root of two to see what that is. What is the square root of two? 1.4 and some change. 1.4 and some change, right? Yeah, like so this is where we put it. Any questions? And you should be able to do tomorrow's on your own by using what we did today. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Any questions before I move on? Yes, good. You can, did you put it in the box? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and take out our notebook, please. Take out our notebook. Put this in your packet. Work to do. Also, let's take out... Let's take out this worksheet. We didn't get to finish that the last time. We need to take that out. Don't forget, progress reports go out on Wednesday. We need to turn to 
a new page. This is going to be page 19. This is going to be page 19. Yes, please. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. This is going to be page 19. I'm going to pause to give yourself, give you time to take out your notebook, okay? All right, so here we go. Good folks. This is quarter two, put Q2 in the corner, and this is page 19. We're going to talk about the strength of a um, line of best fit, the strength of a line of best fit. This is going to be finding the correlation in calculator for line of best fit. And I probably need to put correlation coefficient. It's really what it's called. All right. So your correlation coefficient tells you the strength of the line of best fit. It tells you how strong the line of best fit is or how strong those two um, variables are related to each other, okay? So your correlation coefficient, it tells you how strong the two variables that you're comparing in the scatter plot, how strong they are related. Or quantities. See the words. The letter for correlation co uh, correlation coefficient is R. The letter for correlation coefficient is R. This is going to tell you, bless you, baby. This is going to tell you how closely related these two variables are. Okay. And there's a number for it. I'm going to explain what the number means. Your R or your correlation coefficient is going to be between or equal to one, positive one and negative one, or negative one and positive one, because negative one is smaller. That says plot, right? Yes, it does. Okay. Scatter plot. No, it just, it just, it just looks like an E. It looks like an F. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> <laughs> All right, that's a good question. All right, so your R or your correlation coefficient is going to be numbers from negative 1 to positive one. <laughs> of course, between that zero is in the middle. And I'm gonna explain each of these, okay? If your R is equal to a negative one, that means that they are directly related to each other um, negatively. It's a strong, the strongest negative correlation you could possibly have. This is going to form a straight line going down. Okay. So this is the strongest negative correlation. It'd be a perfect straight line going down. Mm -hmm. They're directly related to each other. 
So the scatter plot would look, let me draw, let me finish writing it first, okay? Strongest negative correlation. This would be a perfect straight line going down. Perfect straight line. All the points are on that line going down. Perfect. <clears throat> Negative correlation, but it's a perfect straight line. Negative slope. How do you know it's going down? Like how do you feel? What do you mean from left to right? It's the line is going down. From left to right, the points start up here, and then what happens as you travel to the to the right? The goes down. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm tired. It's all right, baby. No, nope, true indeed. That's okay, baby. Positive, if your R is positive one, that is the strongest positive correlation. That's the strongest that you could have. The line's going down. That's why you know it's a negative slope. The line go up, it's positive slope. Line go up. Well, when you're talking about a line or you're talking about the rate of change, absolutely. Okay. Because that's the definition of slope. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so if your R is equal to a positive one, that's the strongest positive correlation that you can have. That means that your points are in a perfect straight line going up. Let me draw the line first. Be easier to draw the line first. Perfect straight line. This is a positive slope. It's a perfect straight line. Perfect straight line, y'all. Perfect straight line. If R is zero, that means they are not nowhere near related, okay? Nowhere near related. This is absolutely positively no correlation here. So the closer in either direction that you get to zero the weaker the correlation is going to be, the weaker. All right, so let's start on the negative end. From, if your R is between negative one and a, a negative 0.75, that's a very strong, it's not perfect, but it's a strong correlation. From negative 0.75 to a negative, try to get in the middle somewhere, to a negative 0.5, this is moderate. <clears throat> this is a moderate correlation. From here to here is moderate. And then from 0.5 to zero, this is all weak. This is extremely weak to no correlation. When it's weak, it's really not a correlation at all to it. It's no correlation. It's just weak, weak, weak. This is where your no correlation is going to be. Why would it be weak? Like what, like because it's not strong. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. I don't know either. 
Like I, I knew it. Like I knew the I closer knew. you get to zero makes it no correlation. Oh, okay. okay. So it's really okay. close to zero. So that's what so makes it weak. When it when it's like near a whole number, it's more it's more like like when it's near an actual number other than zero, it's more like stronger. They're all numbers. I don't know how to say that. It the closer it gets to zero makes it weak. Okay. In either direction. Just makes it weak. Well, but the highest number you can have is a negative one and a positive one. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I, get it. I get it. All right. So let's go from the positive end. From 1 to 0.75, what do you think that is? That's a strong positive. These are strong negatives. Strong negative here. This is a moderate negative. This is a weak negative. All the, all this right here is negative correlation. This is negative. Over here is positive. Oops. All right, so this is a strong positive correlation if it's between negative 7.5 and 1. All right, halfway, positive 0.5. What's this? This is moderate. And then between 0 and 0 0.5, what's this? This is weak. Weak positive. What else can I say? W-E-E. -E. Lord, help me. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you. All right, got it. I'm going to pause to give you a chance to write, and then I'm going to show you how to find it in the calculator, okay? Oh. oh, that's funny. All right, here we go. Now let's do an example. Okay, so the example that we're going to do, we're going to type in the scatter plot, okay, and we're going to find the line of best fit. That's the equation. We're going to find that. And then we're going to find the correlation coefficient. And the letter, again, for correlation coefficient, it's another I in there somewhere. The letter for that is R. And the equation is Y equals, okay? All right, so let's type this in. We got um, this is X, this is Y. We're going to type this under L1, the X values, and we're going to type the Y values under L2. So let's see here, Ms. Reyes. Let's do something simple. One. Two, three, four, five, six. And let's do something simple. Let's do, let's make it a positive correlation. Do I want it? Yeah, positive. Let's do two. Uh, let's do four, five, eight, nine, and let's do seven. Okay. Something that's easy. For the most part, the numbers are going up. Okay. Please write this down, pause, give you a chance to write, and then we're going to type it in the calculator. We're going to find the line of best fit, and we're going to find the correlation coefficient. Okay, and this will tell us how strong these two variables are closely related to each other. Okay, you ready? No, okay, I'll pause. All right, so here we go. Please make sure to stay with me, okay? Cut it on. Let's clear it. How do you clear it? Second plus seven. One, two. Yes. I asked you if you was finished. You're not finished yet. Second plus seven. One, two. Now, if a function is missing, something's wrong with your calculator, you need to reset your entire calculator. That is second plus seven, that's all one, two. Okay, that's resetting everything. Something goes wrong with your calculator, you need to reset all, okay? All right, so now, first thing, go to stat. Please follow me. Let's go to stat. This is super important. This will be on your quarter test, it will. All right, from here, you're going to press enter on number one because you want to type in your X values and your Y values. Let's type in our X values. 
You can press the enter button or the down arrow to get to the next line. Press your, uh, type in your X value. Oh. Raise your hand if you're still typing in X values. Anthony, sit up, babe. Did you type in your X values? Hold it up so I can make sure that everyone has it because I don't want to have to come around and then when I'm helping you, you don't even have it typed in. Okay, good. Go over to your L2 and type in your Y values, please. Uh, don't say them out loud because you're going to throw other people off, okay? Everybody doesn't type at the same speed. Please make sure that your ordered pairs match up because if it doesn't, you're going to get an error. One should be here. Two should be here. Two, then four. Three, then five. Four, then eight. Five, then nine. Six, then seven. If it doesn't match up, you're not going to get the right answer. Hold it up so I can make sure that we, we have it. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Okay. All right, so from here, shh, from here, I want to graph this. I want to graph these so I can have my scatter plot. So I press second y equals. Press second y equals. Second y equals. Look, these are different plots. I just want to plot just one graph. So press enter on that one. And I'm going to cut it on. So don't forget to press enter again so it goes from off to on. Now I'm going to graph, okay, because the first choice is scatter plot. It's telling me that my X values are in list one. My Y values are in list two. All of that's right. So just press graph. Look, okay, I, I this is too much space for what I want to see. So I'm going to move my uh move my x over and move my y as well go to window i don't need all this space i don't need to go all the way to negative 10 maybe negative one and then on my y i don't need to go down to negative 10 that's too much space maybe just negative one now graph okay that's a better looking scatter plot i didn't need all that extra space and if i need more space then i just go under window and I adjust my window range. Okay, look, my X min, X max, and my X SEL, it creates the X axis. This is the minimum X value on the X axis. This is the max value on the X axis. And the X SEL, that's the increments that you want the X axis to go up by. These three values create the Y axis. This is your smallest value on your Y. This is your largest value on your Y. And this is the increments that you want the Y axis to go up by. Okay? So now let's do our line of best fit. Our Y. Go to stat. Come on, ladies. Come on, y'all twins. This is how y'all get lost. Shh. Go over to calc. Go down to lean rig. From here, I'm going to type in L1, comma, L2, comma, vars. L1, that's second one. Where is the comma? Above, Above, the, Above the set. Where are you confused about? I'm just, I'm still here because I, I, I heard like I heard you talking about it here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then second two. Where's the comma? Where's bars? Above 10. Above 10, right beside clear. And now where do I go from here? No, don't forget to go over to what? Y bars. Now how many times do I press enter? Three. Okay, do you see this? Okay, got it? This is my this is my line of best fit. I'm gonna abbreviate. You see, I says y is equal to a. Let's truncate. Let's round it because I'm not gonna write all those numbers. 
1.23x, we're rounding, and B is 1.53, repeat it. I'm going to put a repeating bar over the three. That's my line of best fit. Yes. I can't hear you, baby. I'm sorry. Because you did something wrong. Can you bring it, please? The press enter three times. Watch, because you're going to have some of the same error. Okay, Satch, let me fix hers first. Edit, this is correct. Stat, calc, lean reg, second, one, comma, second, two, comma, vars, y vars, enter three times. There she go. Okay, let me see your error. I'm, I'm like, no, I don't die here. I'm like, I'm right there. I'm like, oh. Put a, put a All right, do you see he didn't put a comma? Oh. I'm going to press second entry, and I'm going to go over, okay? And I'm going to insert second delete, and I'm going to insert a comma so I don't have to write it all over. And then I'm going to press enter. Oh. Yes. <laughs> the three. Five and three don't re five and three don't repeat, just the three. So put the line over the three. Shh. Any questions? All right, so now we're gonna do correlation coefficient. You ready? Okay, so to do correlation coefficient, the first thing down here you see where it says catalog? It's in yellow. So press the second button and catalog. So first thing, correlation coefficient. You're going to press second and then catalog. So now you're going to go down and look for diagnostic own. So I can press the D to get there. That is alpha and the letter D. Where is D in green? Right here. Okay. I could press D and go down to D. I accidentally pressed R. I didn't mean to do that. So you can press D to get there faster. Or you can use the up and down arrow. Diagnostic on. Shh. All right, here we go. That's why I said diagnostic on. Shh. This is the one you're looking for, diagnostic on. You're going to press the diagnostic on. This is the one you're looking for. I have diagnostic on. I'm going to press enter. And I see it come on the screen. So after I press enter, uh, diagnostic on, I'm going to press enter again. It should say done. So please make sure that you press enter so that you can see the words don't, done. You have to see done. This is what you should have. I am paying attention. I'm just, I can't what, what's wrong, baby? Like, I, I, like I'm here. No, I'm hearing you talk. I'm just like, not Let me pause. All right, so now, shh, please listen, because I don't want anybody to get lost. Anthony, you good? Okay. So now, after this, you're going to do the line of best fit. Okay, steps to line of best fit. That's what you're going to do. Shh. All right, so that's the next thing. So you're going to go to stack. Like you're doing lean rig again. After you go to stat, where do you go? Come on, y'all. Think, please. Yeah, you will, because you'll do it a bunch of times. No. Cow, thank you. Then what? Lean rig. Then what? Okay, okay, okay. 
Actually, since we've already done this one time, just press enter. So now your R is right there. What's your R? Point what? Your R is point A7. And we could just truncate, cut it off. So what type of correlation is this? Where does it fall? Strong. It's a strong correlation. Strong positive, negative what? Strong positive correlation. It's a strong positive correlation. Every time you're looking for a correlation coefficient. You do not, after you cut diagnostic on, you don't have to do that part again. Because diagnostic is on. It's when you go back and cut it off that you have to, to do diagnostic on. Yes. Can I see it? <clears throat> Shh, listen, this is her error. You, when you see an error like this, you go to go to. See, this is her error. Look, you see how she has this right beside it? Can't do that. Second entry. Did you do um? Okay, done. All right. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Shh. Any questions about this? All right, good folks. Now we're going to, for this one right here, you see the house value. I need you to use the technology to find the correlation coefficient. So I need you to answer these questions. Type this in and answer the questions. I'm going to go through this with you one more time because we didn't read it good on Thursday when we did it. Shh. All right, look. For this first one, you're going to do X is your size, Y is the value of the house. So you're going to type in this for your X, and the value of the house is for Y. Shh. When you type this in, your window value is going to have to change. Let's press second plus 712. Second plus seven all one two. I'm going to do the window range for you. I'm going to help you out. Please make sure that you're listening so that you don't get this part wrong. The X axis has to fit so that you can graph these ordered pairs. Your smallest X axis is 800. Your largest X axis, uh, X value is 32. So when you go to window, second plus seven, one, two. Go to window. We're just going to deal with the x-axis alone. If I type in my minimum value as 800, 800 is going to be on the edge of the screen. How do I get what, like, press oh window? God. If I type in 800 for x men, 800 is going to be on the edge of the screen. I don't want it to be on the edge of the screen. I need just a little space. So I'm going to type in a number that's a little bit smaller than 800. I'm going to type in 700. Just a little smaller so I can see 800. If I type in 800, it's going to be at the edge of the screen, and I might miss the point. Okay? Now i got to go all the way up to 3,200 or over to 3,200. Okay? So here, I'm going to type in a number just a little bit above 3,200, so 3,300. So that I can see 3,200. Oops. Now, if I go up by ones, it's going to take forever to get from 700 to 3,300. So let's go up by 100. That's going to be easier to read. Think about if you was actually graphing this on paper. You would not want to go up by ones. That's ridiculous. Any questions about how I created the X axis? for these points. 
So let's do the y-axis for these y-values. What's the smallest y-value? 90,000. What's the largest? 350. Do you see it? So the smallest is 90. Let's go under 90, okay? What do you want to do for a little under 90? 80,000. And let's go a little above 350. What do you want to do there? I would do for 360. That's fine. Oops. All right, if I go up by ones, it'll take forever to get there, and the calculator is going to give you an error anyway. So what do I want to go up by? 10,000. 10, okay. <laughs> Any questions about how to create my window range? Where are you lost at? What's wrong? No, no, I got it. No, I got it all right. Then that's it. Calm down. That's it. That's all. I promise you. All right, so now type these numbers in the calculator. This is your L1. This is your L2. Let's do that and then graph it. Where do I go to graph after I type them in? Second Y equals. Don't forget that. And then cut it on and press graph. Okay, so go to stat and type in your numbers, please. Stat, enter. Type in numbers, please. I'm going to pause for the calls. Type it in just how you see it. This is a point. This point right here is at 1,150. The value of the house is what? 110,000. When the square footage is 2,100, what is the price of that house? 199. They match up. You have to type it in exactly the way you see it.